Hello, and welcome to uh, AI as a Hoot Let's Play. You'll see that I have the screen um, uh, resolution really low, uh, because most likely you'll be doing this with students with Chromebooks, and uh, the screen resolution will be uh, very low for them, and that introduces some of the challenge in doing this exercise. Um, for some students, uh, you'll be able to um, fix the resolution a little bit with control minus, uh, but you need to make sure that they are still able to see uh, the screen. Um, so here we have Oliver on the right. Uh, I'm going to talk through the parts of the screen a little bit. Um, here, these are called the libraries, um, movement library, events library, widgets library, etc. Uh, on the right, these are the tabs. Uh, this can be a little confusing. You'll also have a widgets tab, sounds tab, game tab. And on the left, you have the instructions. You'll want the students able to scroll through these instructions. You can either click in the area and use the arrow keys or two fingers to scroll. Or if you're really precise, you can grab the um, scroll bar to scroll. Uh, one thing with the students is generally they will get lost reading the overview and they'll look at this, they'll want to play the video as a game and they won't be able to do that yet. Um, and then they'll look at the code example and uh, really stress out that they don't know how to find the loot block. The key really is to scroll down to the instructions and the instructions will always be highlighted on the next step that the uh, program is expecting you to complete. Uh, students will often run ahead or um, start adding sprites and stuff. Adding sprites, uh, for instance, add new, we can add a giraffe. Um, doing this will often confuse the instructions checker. To, to remove a sprite, you click on this tiny little settings widget, and often you'll have to scroll down here to get to the delete button. So I'm going to make my screen big, big again. Um, not that big. And uh, you can see it's a little off the screen here for me. On Chromebooks, it will almost always be well off the screen. And a lot of these uh, options will be hidden uh, to the students. So delete that sprite. And let's start with moving Oliver. So, uh, in resizing, we lost the on run block. Uh, so you can use the um, drag bar to find it again. Oh, that's, um, let's hide that. And then we have this drag bar. No. Okay. So when you get into a state like this, you can um, use the zoom sometimes to find it again. Uh, it will be there somewhere. You can also um, go to events, and I think there's an on run in here, but there isn't. Um, and so the next trick is to hit control R to reload the page because they haven't started yet. Um, you can typically reload any of the exercises uh, and it will just take you back to the top of that particular exercise. This is exercise number one. Uh, so we've got our unrun block again. Um, if the movement library isn't already selected, they click movement and drag the step block. You have to notice this is using uh, blocks or scratch-like uh, technology. So there's a little divot on the top of the blocks that you're dragging and a little divot on the bottom also. And so you want, you can, when you get close, those divots will snap together and you can let go. Um, so we've got that connected, we do our check, and when you check, you can see it goes to the next instruction. If it doesn't go to the next instruction, that is the time that you want to start debugging the program and seeing why it doesn't think uh, that you've done it correctly. Um, some of that could be if you have created a new sprite or created a widget or any of the other things, really. It wants Oliver to have on run step and the default one. Uh, also, I've seen it not uh, continue to the next step if they've added another uh, number in the step. So now click on run and see what happens. 
you wait until um, the, oh, and then click on stop. Following the instructions, very important. Oliver barely moved. Uh, a lot of students won't read the text in the instruction next. They'll be like, nothing worked. Uh, the answer is look at the instructions, read it, do the next step. So now it says remove the step from the on run block. Sometimes students will, uh, and you remove it by uh, clicking on the step block and dragging it off. Uh, sometimes students will drag it onto the trash or delete it some other way, and then they'll have to add it again. Um, so now drag a loop from the control library, click on control, loop is right here, and then attach it to the on run block, drag a step block from the movement library and attach it to the loop block. We've already got our step block, so we can just attach it to the loop and check. Now click on run and see that the owl is moving forward. The owl moves forward and it stops. Does the owl stop? Why? It hit a brick wall. Uh, students will also be confused at this step. They'll hit stop, they'll hit run. Um, what they need to do is notice that it says great job here and there's a next button. Uh, there are some instructions, but most people will just X through this. Again, overview, AI to the rescue, it's explaining a lot of really cool stuff, but students will be confused, may be confused about what to do next. We will use an AI model, click on add new model in the AI pose tab. AI pose tab should already be selected and they click on this add new model. That's going to change the screen entirely. And um, this is another place that it is very easy to get ahead of yourself and do the wrong thing. So give your model a name um, and it suggests name your model, make, making it simpler to locate another at a later time. Otherwise, it'll just name it model one, model two, something like that. Name the first class, raise hands. So students get stuck here, not realizing class one is the first class. You can click on this or you can click the little edit pencil to click on it and type raise hands. Um, when they do it correctly, it will jump to the next step immediately. If they type it with a capital R or without a space or raise hand, it will not move on to the next step. If they then move on to the next step, when they eventually fix raise hands, it won't know that they've done it and they'll have to do it again. Uh, it can be a good chance to just reload the page and start exercise two uh, back from the beginning. Um, record poses for raise hands by clicking on record. Now App Code Monkey wants to use your camera. Some students will accidentally hit block. You should hit allow, but if you hit block, webcam access denied, please grant permission to continue. You try to hit record, it will still be stuck here. So then you can hit control comma to open settings or under Chrome settings, it will pop up a new window to drag it to uh, my recording screen. Go to privacy and security, scroll down to site settings. And then you can see here appcodemonkey.com. I blocked the camera, uh, but you actually want to scroll down to the camera permissions. And here it's, you can see that in private viewing, uh, CodeMonkey is not allowed to use my camera. I can delete this to have no sites added, close the settings, and then when I hit record, it will prompt me again, and you can say allow. Part will be very slow on a Chromebook. You have to have patience. Um, the next things uh, are people might not realize. Okay, I clicked on record already. Click on the timer icon. You want to see it turn green. That changes this text right here. Um, when it's not green, it says hold to record. When it's green, it's going to be a timer. So the camera will start taking pictures in five seconds. You want to raise your hands while it's taking the pictures. Make sure to move a little to take many versions of your pose. So click to record. I'm going to hold up my hands. And now I'm going to move them a little bit so that the camera gets a better idea of what different poses are. It took 216 samples really quickly for me. 
Um, when that works correctly, the instruction box goes green and you move to the next uh, piece. Again, rename class two to stand. Click on record. And then you want to show the camera what it is like to be standing. So five, four, three, two, one. This is me standing. Uh, it's learning I'm further away. Uh, there's a smaller amount of me and my hands aren't raised. Although my hands were talking a little bit. So we'll see what happens. The next section is um, students may have to scroll over to see this train model button. You click on it and this will take a decent while on a Chromebook. Um, it's taking a while on mine too. And then the, the bar will go up. We wait. And now you are ready to train the model. We just did that. Okay. After training the model, the model can identify the two poses you recorded. So you can scroll over some more. It thinks I'm raising my hands all the time, even though I'm not. Um, and then does it get stand when I'm further away? At the very least, it gets stand when I'm further away. It only knows these two poses. So essentially for me just now, it learned um, stand and not stand. If I wanted to retrain uh, raising my hands better, I could scroll back here. One easy mistake is to uh, scroll and trigger the go back button in the browser that will take you back and you'll have to redo this work. Here I'm going to remove samples, record again. I'm going to stand and raise my hands. So it should be able to better differentiate between standing and raised hands. And then I'll train the model again. Now it thinks I'm standing all the time, but there, I raised my hands. And that feels a little better. So I will, uh, okay, there's a trick here. You can add another class, which is a neutral pose. And this was actually a suggestion from one of my students. Record samples and neither be standing nor raising hands. This gives the computer an option to um, sort of bucket neither into. So I'll click to record. Um, you can introduce this or uh, skip it depending on uh, how the class is going. And now train model. Okay, so it has a neutral pose. Kind of gets my raised hands pose. Probably will get it better if I'm in the back where I was before. There's a raised hand pose and then standing without raising hands. So that can be a little helpful for the next uh, part of the uh, program. So then press save here and they're back here. Uh, students will not notice again, may not notice again. There's a next button now. So that's what you want to click on, not the give it a try. Um, if, if they click on give it a try, again, this will be slow. It's the same uh, setup as the other one. And they'll want to click X to get out of that. But here you can hit next. Um, similarly, you can read uh, and understand, or you can jump to the instructions. Choose the AI model you created in the previous exercise by clicking on it. So you want to click on my model over here. That'll take you forward. Uh, another confusion here is you want to add the webcam widget from the widgets tab. Uh, that is to say, don't use the widgets library, use the widgets tab. Add new, webcam, add. 
that'll put a webcam here. And by default, the webcam is named webcam. That's what you want to keep. Um, and it says drag the webcam to the upper area of the game. The only reason to do that is to make this part of the game more visible while you're working on it. Uh, you'll notice you're currently programming the webcam. This is a common mistake. Uh, it has its own on run. If you drag in uh, movement commands into the webcam and run it, you will often get this error. I don't know what this dot step is because the webcam is not set up to do movement commands. You'll want to, uh, disconnecting it is fine though. And you'll see that run, the owl bumps the end again. So now, it says click on the owl sprite to bring its code. Here we're back on Oliver and you can see its code. Drag an on prediction block from the AI library. Students may need to scroll to see the AI library and then an on prediction, not predict. On prediction, because we had, because we selected the model, it has the various predictions that that model can make. If we do not have the model selected, um, I don't know that we can unselect it. If we do not have the model selected, when you go to AI, um, the on prediction will have an empty uh, prediction string there. You'll need to go select the model and drag a new on prediction uh, block in, and then change the drop down to raise hands. It'll be raise hands by default if raise hands was the first class defined. Check. Drag a jump block from the movement library, attach it inside on prediction, check. And now we're going to Oliver jump on a Chromebook. This will be very slow. Um, have some patience. Uh, it's doing pose detection and pose classification on a uh, very slow machine. Now, in order to jump, we need on prediction raise hands. So we convince it that we're raising our hands and he jumps and gets to the end. Um, again, next. They can X out of the sign up and scroll down to instructions. Add a text widget. So add new, text, add, hello world. Uh, a thing students will forget often is we are now programming the text. We want to program the owl. Click on the owl sprite. That's this right here in the game. Um, or if you're uh, on the widgets, you can go to sprites and select the owl there. You can see the owl's code is still in the window. Drag the on update when, uh, block that will be scrolled over to the right, second to last. Check. Drag the set block from the widgets library. So again, library is down here, tab is over here. We want it from the widgets library. And we have set text, text to blank. Drag that into on update. Go back to the AI library and we want predict this time. And this is another one that students have some, some trouble uh, pattern matching to drag. It has a notch on the left. You want to drag that notch right here. If you're over here, or if you're like centering the block, it won't work. You need the notch to be near the notch. And you want to make sure that it has predict raise hands. Again, if you don't have the model selected, it will be an empty uh, block right there. Um, check, and then click on run. So now, once the webcam loads, it will show you the prediction value for raise hands. And as you raise your hands and get it just where you had it before, maybe a little further back, it will have a high prediction value. Um, for some reason, it doesn't always jump when it, there's a threshold on what that prediction value needs to be. Uh, once you hop the owl to the end, um, which again will be very slow on a Chromebook. Uh, students just need to have patience. Click next. Uh, this um, now go to the game tab on the lower right side of the screen. Uh, students might not notice this instruction. Um, 
and for, sometimes the game tab won't be auto selected. Also, they will have a much smaller window here, so they may have to scroll down to find uh, world width. Change that to 3600. Run, and no Oliver disappears after walking across the screen. You have to just wait for him to run across the screen before it goes to the next instruction, and then you can hit stop. Now, set the camera to follow Oliver, set the camera target to Oliver. Again, the students need to click on the game tab to find camera target. They may have clicked on other things and not know how to find camera target. It's on the game tab, camera target, Oliver. Click on run and wait for the webcam to load and the models to load. And Oliver will very slowly walk to the right when it has when Oliver's walked far enough, it triggers great job. If the student clicks stop because uh, they're expecting to move on to the next thing, it will not actually trigger and you need to run, wait, and let the owl move far enough to trigger great job. Click on next. Um, now add tiles to make the game more challenging. Click on the paintbrush that's up over here in the top right and you have different tiles. They're just visually different. They don't uh, change how the game works at all. Um, and you can use your paintbrush to draw and your eraser to delete. Now, if they draw something that Oliver can't jump over, then uh, they'll get stuck later and have to use the eraser. Now click on the drag icon to scroll. That's this uh, arrows here. And you can see they want to click from the far right and drag to the left. Um, many of the students will need that instruction. And then make Oliver jump over the tiles you added. This is where, so click, drag, click, drag. This is where if they made it impossible to complete the level, jump, Oliver, jump. They will be stuck. Hit stop, go to the eraser, and erase the blocks that made it too hard to jump. If they put those blocks off the screen, help them remember to drag all the way over to do the appropriate erasing. And run. And click on next. So now we have a, a new uh, step, exercise seven of nine. We're going to now do three poses, squat, stand, and arms up. Uh, again, for an advanced or uh, more clear option, we can do um, four poses, squat, stand, arms up, and neutral. So add new model in the AI pose tab. Name the first class squat. Click on record. The timer. And I'm just going to sort of slump in my chair to make a squat. Hopefully we'll see how that works. Okay, name the second class stand. And for this, uh, I'm going to just sort of put my head towards the top. Uh, the timer icon is still selected. Okay, and then add a third class. Name it arms up and record and click to record and i'm going to add a neutral class record click to record And 
then scroll over again, train model. Now this has a lot more samples, so the training will probably go even slower. Preview and save. So it has neutral. It has squat, it has stand, and it has arms up. So we save, and again, you get to the screen and it looks like you should be doing something, you should click next. Now, we're going to play with Oliver. So, we are back, you need to make sure that Oliver is selected drag an on prediction block, but we have not selected our new model. If you drag, oh, it looks like it auto selected our new model. Great. Um, if the model is not selected, it will not have uh, the right text. Or if you select this one, AI on prediction, it'll have the wrong ones. Drag that to the trash. We have, let's stick with my model one. Uh, drag a jump block that's from the movement library jump into the on prediction and we wanted this to be arms up Check. another prediction block so ai on prediction squat drag a set scale block so it doesn't tell you where set scale is i think it was in display it is so from display, you drag set scale, and you want to change the value from 1 to 0.5. Check. Now one more on prediction block for stand. And again, display, set scale, and we're going to leave it at 1. Now when we're, we're going done. to use our different predictions, um, it's going to trigger the shrink right away, uh, and then uh, we can make ourselves bigger by standing, and smaller by squatting, and then raise our arms up to jump. Then we need to go under and over, over again. Or notice, great job showed up, so we can hit next. Uh, now we're going to, again, scroll down to the instructions um, and add a clock widget from the widgets tab. So add new clock, has the defaults that we need, and drag it to the top left uh, to make it a nicer display. And notice you're on the clock. Uh, screen, not the um, owl, then drag start clock to on run. Check. Then we click back to the owl, and where you can see all of the owl's code, and we go to events on collide with world bounds, and change the drop down to right. And then we drag a pause game block. Uh, no, it doesn't tell you where that is either. I think that's in game and sounds. And there we have pause game, place it inside on collide with world bounds. And run. And wait. Oliver runs under. Oliver goes over. Oliver goes under. Over. Here you can go over or under. Actually, if you go over, you get stuck and you have to reload or stop and start the game. So that took 19 seconds. And uh, you'll notice uh, it was very kind. It didn't actually start the clock until the models finished loading, at least. Uh, it says click on run again. Uh, so stop, run, and try to complete it faster. 
I'm not going to complete it faster, but you only have to try. Congratulations, course completed. Uh, now you can keep editing or play your game. Um, if you go to play your game, it pops up like this and you get the whole game. go back. Here we are. We have course completed. Um, and we've sort of restarted here. I have had students uh, complete the course and then be very frustrated that they couldn't go back and edit the level. You can hit reload. And now you can edit the level. And that is AI is a hoot.